In Kubernetes, the smallest unit or component is a pod and not a container. And considering that pod always contains one main container, for example, you might have a pod with Postgres container or Elasticsearch container or your own application. Some people may be asking why the need for abstracting the container with a pod if there is anyways just one main application running inside. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you why having a pod as an abstraction over container is such an important concept in Kubernetes. I'm going to give you a comparison between pod and container, and I will show you in which cases you would need to have multiple containers inside one pod and how these containers then will communicate with each other. At its core, Kubernetes networking has one important fundamental concept, which is that every pod has a unique IP address and that IP address is reachable from all the other pods in the cluster. So that's the main concept. Now, why is it important and valuable to have this pod component with its own IP address? You see, one main challenge on distributed infrastructure with multiple servers is how to allocate ports to services and applications running on servers without getting conflicts since obviously you can only allocate one port once on a single host. With containers, you would soon face this challenge because this is how container port mapping works. Let's take, for example, a PostgreSQL container where inside the container, the Postgres application starts at port 5432. Now, when you start containers directly on your machine, what you do is you bind your host port to the application port in the container. And to see that in practice, we can start Postgres Docker container. So this is the part where we map or we bind the port on the host to the port of the application running inside the Docker container. So it doesn't have to be the same port. I can also give it a completely different one. So let's write 5000. And if I execute this command, Postgres container started. And if we check here with Docker PS, I will see that port 5000 on the host machine is mapped to this one here. So now the application is reachable by the host port. Now that I have one Postgres uh, already running, I could start another Postgres container that will also run at the same port, but bind it on a different port on my host. So this will work as well. So if I go here now and say Docker PS, I will see two Postgres applications bound to different ports on the host. And this is how containers work. The problem with this is when you have hundreds of containers running on your servers, how can you keep track of what ports are still free on the host to bind them? So soon enough with this type of port allocation, it will become difficult to have an overview and the way Kubernetes solves this problem is by abstracting the containers using pods, where pod is like its own small machine with its own IP address, usually with one main container running inside. For example, you might have a pod where Postgres container is running. When a pod is created on a node, it gets its own network namespace and a virtual ethernet connection to connect it to the underlying infrastructure network. So a pod is a host, just like your laptop. Both have IP addresses and a range of ports they can allocate to its containers. This means you don't have to worry about port mappings on the server where pod is running and only inside the pod itself. But since you anyways usually have just one main container or sometimes maybe maximum up to six containers inside a pod, you won't get conflicts there because you have a pretty good overview of what containers are running inside. This means that on one server, you can have, for example, 10 microservice applications that all run on port 8080 inside 10 different pods, and you won't have any conflicts because they all run on self-contained isolated machines, which are pods. So to also see that in practice, um, I have a mini cube cluster running. So I'm going to create a pod uh, that's going to run a Postgres container inside. So this is the pods YAML file that I'm going to execute. This is the same image, the same environmental variable, and this is the port here. So I'm just defining the container port, which is where the application inside the container is going to start it. 
So I'm gonna go and execute this file. And by the way, if you want to learn how to set up and use Minikube on your laptop, I have a separate video about that where I explain all the details of how to set it up together with the kubectl command lines. So you can check that out. And the pod was created and the Postgres is running. So now if I wanted to run multiple Postgres uh, pods on one node, I can, I can do that too. So I'm going to change the name here. So I'm going to say Postgres 2 like this, and we'll leave the container name. We're just going to change the pod name and everything else stays the same. So I'm going to apply that again and Postgres 2 was created. So now I'll have two pods running the same application and I can create tens of those. And this is a normal case, for example, where you have a multiple replicas of the same application running on your server. And there's no problem of port mapping here. Another reason why pod abstraction over container is useful is that you can easily replace the container runtime in Kubernetes. So for example, if you replace Docker runtime with another container runtime like Vagrant, for example, Kubernetes configuration will stay the same because it's all on the pod level. It means that Kubernetes isn't tied up to any particular container runtime implementation. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, sometimes pod might have two or more containers inside. This is a case when you need to run a helper or side application to your main application. Like, for example, uh, for synchronizing when you have multiple database pods or for backing up your application at certain intervals. So it would have this backup sidecar container within your application container, uh, or it could be a scheduler or maybe authentication gateway. So there are many use cases um, where you might end up having more than one containers inside a pod. Now the question is, how do these containers communicate with each other inside the pod? Remember pod is an isolated virtual host with its own network namespace and containers inside all run in this network namespace. This means that containers can talk to each other via local host and a port number, just like when you're running multiple applications on your own laptop. So let's also see that in practice. Um, so I'm going to head over to my Minikube cluster and create a pod with two containers. So I'm going to take Nginx for that so that we can curl uh, the endpoint. So I'm going to have one uh, Nginx container and inside that in the containers part, I'm going to add another container. And this is going to be just a simple curl image because this one has curl inside and also netstat because most of the images do not come with curl or netstat and these kind of tools to keep them as lightweight as possible. And this is just going to print out something and then wait for 300 seconds so that we have enough time to check the endpoint. So I'm going to save that. You can find the link to the YAML file in the description so that you can try it out yourself. And let's create that pod. Nginx file. And pod gets created. So let's check that. And both of the containers are running. And now I'm going to enter into curl container. So I'm going to do that pod name. And now because I have two containers, I have to specify the container name where I want to enter. So it's going to be sidecar container. So I'm inside the curl container. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check uh, first with netstat. And this is the port where Nginx is running. So this is the 80 port. And I can also curl localhost 80 and I'll get this Welcome to Nginx index HTML page. And if I check the Nginx logs, I'm going to see the, those curl requests coming also from localhost from the curl container. Also having noticed that in a Kubernetes cluster, when you run Docker containers, there is this pause container always uh, per each pod. These are called sandbox containers whose only job is to reserve and hold the pod's network namespace that's shared by all the containers in a pod. So POS container makes it possible for the containers to communicate with each other. And also if a container dies, 
and a new one gets created, pod will stay and keep its IP address. But note that if the pod itself dies, it gets recreated and a new pod will get assigned a different IP address. So to see that pods container, let's go back to the Minikube cluster. However, note that Minikube runs in a virtual machine. So if I do Docker PS here, I won't see any containers running inside the Minikube cluster because it's not on my host. It's running in its own virtual host. So in order to connect to it from my host, what I have to do is tell my Docker to execute Docker commands on a remote host, which is gonna be my Minikube. And for that, there's this compact commands. So if I echo this, which is Minikube Docker N, you see that I set a Docker host, which basically sets a remote host address for my Docker client. And this is the IP address of the Minikube. You can check that address, by the way, if you, for example, describe a pod. Here you see in this meta information, the node is set to Minikube, and this is the IP address that I have here. And it also sets the certificate so that you can access that. So now if I do this and then Docker PS, I will be able to see all the Docker containers that are running in the Minikube. So here, even though I just created one Nginx pod with two containers in it, I get a whole list of containers. So where this come from is basically in my Minikube, I have these default namespaces as well uh, that have their own containers running. If you want to learn about namespaces, I have a separate video about that, so you can check that out. So let's go back here. Notice there are a bunch of pause containers here. And if I grab that um, based using this prefix, I see the list of pause containers and in the name, they all have pod name that they belong to. So let's let's clear this up and let's check for Nginx pod. And here it is. This is our Nginx pod. This is Nginx ingress controller that is also running in a different namespace. So this is our pod right here and it has its pause um, container. So every pod has its own pause container. Now this video just showed one part of the whole Kubernetes networking, which is a much broader topic. So for example, other concepts would include things like how pods themselves communicate with each other across hundreds of servers, regardless of which node they are on. Also the concept of how the outside world communicates with Kubernetes cluster, as well as how Kubernetes plugs into the underlying infrastructure network, which can be a cloud platform or a bare metal infrastructure. And in addition to that, I believe that learning about Docker container networking will really help in understanding how Kubernetes networking works, uh, because then you have a good comparison. So because there are so many concepts there, I'm creating a complete Kubernetes networking course where I explain all these concepts with real life example demos. And once I release that course, I will announce it on my channel. So stay tuned for that. If you liked this video and got some valuable information out of it, then please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And also click the notification bell if you don't want to miss new video uploads. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.